بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد أي لهبة في الله continue on in our very brief uh, study or almost a discussion with some basic uh, comment a basic commentary we could say of the Nawakid of Islam <clears throat> and we're going over Dr. Saleh Asale his his uh, translation and his uh, footnotes or his commentary and with bringing our own limited uh, ta'liqat we reached the fourth uh, nakhid where Imam Muhammad Ibn Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala said من التقدى أن غير هدي نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكملوا من هديه أو أن الحكم غيره أحسن من حكمه كالذي يفضل حكم تواغيت على حكمه فهو كافر uh, Imam Muhammad Ibn Wahab said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, the, the fourth, the belief that guidance by someone other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better, or that ruling by other than the rule of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better than this is kufr, meaning that the person who believes that rulership other than uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's rulership or, or Sharia, then this person has disbelieved. And so we'll go back to uh, because Dr. Saleh, he might have been translating an, another version, so I, I'll give just a little bit more uh, detailed translation for the nas that I have here, the, the, the text that I have. So it says, Rabbi min atakada in aghayda hadi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akbalu min hadi o enno hukma ghayri asinu min hukmihi kem ladhi yufaddalu hukma tawahid ala hukmihi fu kafir. So basically, uh, as we said, uh, as, the, as the doctor said, whoever believes that uh, the guidance, that there is a guidance other than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that it is more complete than his guidance, or that there is a rule other than his guidance and it is better than his rule, similar to the ones who prefer the rulership of the Tawahid. And we talked about Tawahid and Tawahid before, and there are various types. There are those who believe that they uh, should be worshipped and they're pleased with that. That's one form of Tawahid. There are those who believe in ruling by other than what Allah has revealed and that their rulership is either better than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated or equal, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule is not. Um, uh, useful in this time and this is also tabut and, and disbelief and the person who has any of these uh, qualities then this person uh, is a disbeliever and that's what uh, Sheikh Muhammad al-Dohab rahimahullah ta'ala was saying and and then in regards to that so Dr. Saleh he said in his commentary he said he, he brought the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem but no, by your Lord, they can have no true faith, al-wajib, which is dutiful, which is an obligation upon them, until they make you judge in all disputes between them and find in their souls no resistance against your decisions, but accept them fully with submission. That's Islam. Islam That's Islam, is that we, is complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and not having any um, discord and discomfort in your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rulership and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws and his commandments. That's a level of iman, of course. That doesn't mean that if someone is discomforted that they have no iman, that they're a disbeliever. No. That means everyone's on different levels of iman. That some people, they may be kind of weak and they... They don't hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, but they're not as comfortable. They don't understand it. They don't understand the wisdom behind it. So maybe they're weak in its practice or weak in its understanding in it, and even in its acceptance. They don't deny it. They accept it, but they have some weakness in their acceptance. Then that's a weakness in their faith, a deficiency in their faith. That doesn't mean they left the full Islam. But the ones who uh, disbelieve or believe that uh, there's a better rule or 
uh, or it's on equal footing, or that they don't have to rule by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, or something like this, then these, person, these uh, people have disbelieved. And in regards to that, then the doctor, he mentioned some examples. He said some examples of this are the belief that systems and laws made by human beings are better than or equal to the Sharia of Islam. Or that Islamic system is not suitable for the contemporary times. And that Islam is the cause of backwardness of the Muslims. So the people who believe this, then they have disbelieved. Uh, the second type is the, the belief that enforcing the punishments prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as the cutting of the hand of the thief or the stoning of the adulterer, is not suitable for this day and age. So again, this is also uh, disbelief if someone were to say that that's not suitable. That's not, uh, uh, they, they don't believe it and they don't accept it because it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. Now, obviously, there's hikmah in applying it. And obviously, it depends on the society, whether you're in Darul Islam or Darul uh, uh, a Kufr. You're in a Muslim land or an uh, uh, Islamic land. Or you're, you're in a, Muslim, a land that uh, practices Sharia or a land that doesn't practice the Sharia. So these, all these things uh, come into play. And these issues are referred, these issues of judgment referred to the, the, um, the judges, the Islamic judges in the Islamic countries. But it's not for just anyone to simply try to apply and say that they are ruling by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law in a non-Muslim country. You can't go in, as we've had many jama'at, many groups and sects, meaning that they've broken away from the orthodox Islam, from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Fahim of the Salaf of this Ummah, that they've broken away from that minhaj, that methodology, and they try to implement the Sharia, for example, in America or in many other Western nations by, and actually try to do Sharia punishment. This is totally incorrect. This is completely incorrect and not permissible because they are, do, they are doing that which is causing more harm than benefit. And they are not Islamic judges. They do not have the knowledge, nor do they not have the, uh, the ability to protect their communities and protect their lands. They are not in authority over their lands, even if they appoint a secret imam to be there to have bay'ah to him which is the case with the most of these jama'at and these groups. And then they, you know, I've known and seen people personally who've tried, who have uh, been a part of those groups and those sects and have implemented, tried to implement punishments. You know, breaking people up, busting their noses, this and this and this, saying that they, they're doing some sort of Islamic law. This is completely incorrect. Or even to the extent of killing, that some people have killed, been wanted, and they were individuals who believe, you know, he caught his wife committing adultery or whatever, and he killed his wife, and then he was, on, he was an outlaw, and causing the FBI to make surveillance of whole communities because of the people defending and protecting this individual, thinking that he was on something correct, or because he was from their secret group and their secret jama'ah, then they defended him. The point being is that the Muslim believes in the Sharia and the Muslim uh, does not believe that there are any laws equal to or superior to uh, or comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law and that this is a part of Iman and that the person who believes that they have a type of rulership or a law better than the Sharia or equal to or comparable to or more useful than then this person is disbelieved so this is a very serious uh, matter that we have to be cautious and it's a matter which has been highlighted in this time and age by especially some of the more extreme groups that this is a big part of their dawah that they emphasize the issue of rulership, which is an important, incredibly important uh, issue, of course. But they, some of them, they go to an extent of going beyond the boundaries. And then they make takfir because they don't know the details, because they don't really have knowledge, like similar to their predecessors, the Khawarij, who used to make takfir of the Sahaba and fight the Sahaba and kill the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala and ajma'in. So these people uh, who have inherited that creed due to a lack of uh, knowledge and going into the 
to the details of these Masail, they say that everyone who lacks in ruling by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law is a disbeliever. But in fact, if they practice that themselves, and I have even, I recall once, this is on topic, but I had come back from Saudi Arabia and I was in a masjid in my local community. And it was after, it was Yom al and I came out and there was a man from one of the particular Muslim lands, uh, Arab country, and he said to me, yeah, how is Saudi Arabia? And then he basically basically made tikfir and said, you know, they're not ruling by Allah's law. And I said, subhanAllah. I said, are you ruling by Allah's law? Where's your beard? The man, his beard, he was bald-faced. His trousers were way beyond uh, his ankles. And I said, well, where's your tatbik of the sharia? Is it permissible for you to rule? Because you are obstinate in that sin as well. So we have to be careful to say that when, peop when, when someone... Uh, is not when they have sins in their land or that they have sins to say that they're not ruling by Allah's law or that they prefer. No, that's not the, the, the practice of that. But I made the point with that individual because he was talking about sins of the rulers and sins in the land and he failed to look at his own sins. That he, right as his mouth, as those his speech came off his tongue, it was bouncing off his baby face, which is clear from the Sharia that even probably most of Ahl al except that the beard, that you should grow your beard. Trimming the beard is something different where you, you may have some differences with some of the fuqaha and what have you and the details of the Messiah, but growing a beard, but this man was cl very cleanly shaven, trousers smoking up the masjid, among other things, and this uh, shows us that we have to be cautious and be cautious of this type of dawah and understand some of the details and we kept this this sitting is very brief if you want to know more details I know there's other students of knowledge that have explained this in detail and in many of my darus as well if you go back to my other uh, study of this treatise we went into detail about these issues so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil